Well, welcome back for another edition of our Soda Citizen podcast. Today, we are so excited to have Frank Kaysen with us. He is president of Kaysen Development Group and um, just ready to ask you a couple questions about where you see Columbia going and kind of what you have brewing and um, anything you want to share with us. Absolutely. I'm so, excited. So Frank, I think you're one of the guys that like, anytime something cool is going on, they're like, Frank's doing that. And you're like, Who, who's Frank? Like you hear <laughs> your name a lot, right? But like, I've, I've heard about you for years, seriously, either through a uh, member, like uh, either members of church or like agents that work with us that were really heavy in young life. And they have all these different connections to you. But like, you're like one of the guys we've always wanted to interview. That's like the mover and shaker. That's not the political side. You're just, you're out there making Columbia awesome. And you're seeing the potential and so those are the people we want to kind of- Brad also with. has a little bro crush on you too, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> anybody that's like developing and getting stuff done, like, yeah. first of all, it's Will Smith, okay? Uh, okay. So just back up. Okay. Um, you're, you're second. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, well, maybe, Feel good now. So. All right, yeah. So- Now I'm comfortable. Give people a little background, because there's there's a couple of Cason's in town, right? I mean, your yep. family's pretty mm-hmm. well well known around. So how did the Cason group come about, the development group, excuse me? And how do y'all, I mean, because you were with a different company before that. And so what are you doing now with yeah. development? Well, thank you for that intro. I, I feel like we've done pretty much nothing other than scratch the surface <laughs> here in Columbia, but um, which is exciting. It's, yeah. Because uh, I think there's a lot to come. Um, oh, good. Yeah. I am one of three boys uh, to your point of your question. Yeah. Um, my two older brothers, um, one's in the insurance industry. Gotcha. Uh, so the Case and Group mm-hmm. is yep. a different company yep. uh, that is in insurance. Um, it's a company my dad started that my brother William's the president of. Oh, cool. Um, Case and Development Group, I started uh, on my own about five and a half years ago now, okay. um, approaching six years. Uh, before that, I was I started with Colliers, which you guys are probably familiar with. Oh, yeah. And was there for about eight years. Um, an awesome group there and awesome uh, experience. And left there after eight years and went and worked with two guys on um, Define Street, yeah. Mark, Mark James and Tyler Baldwin, and worked with them for a few years sure. you know, in the development business. Um, so that was where I went to cut my teeth full time in yeah. development. I did some developments on the side while I was at uh, Collier's and uh, kind of knew sure. pretty early on while I was there that, that was what I wanted to do. But it's a one, as we just kind of discussed, nobody really knows what developers do. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And um, it's kind of hard to get into it um, yeah. other than going to work for someone. Um, sure. So why don't you start with that? So, like what, somebody hears the word like developer or you're working on some development. Like what is that specifically? Yeah. I've heard us re- referred to as more like conductors because mm-hmm. we're not playing any instruments, but we're there to coordinate all, all mm-hmm. of the, uh, the different instruments to see what um, when you come, when this instrument comes in and when this one sure. comes in and which ones are needed at uh, which time. So, uh, but what I tell most people is we typically buy uh, and renovate or buy a raw land and build new buildings. Yeah. We typically rent those uh, to people. Um, sometimes we sell them right away. Sure. Uh, most everything that we do inside of Columbia our focus is to hold yeah. uh, for the long term. So. Do you do a lot outside of Columbia or mostly just in Columbia? We do. It kind of goes up and down. Yeah. Um, uh, most people don't know what we're inside of Columbia, don't know what we're doing outside of right. Columbia. Um, so it's about 50-50. Okay. Um, most of everything we do outside of Columbia is retail focused. And then inside of Columbia, we're more opportunistic in the projects that we look at. So we want to be more. Do you go out of the state or? We have, okay. but mostly in the state. Yeah. Gotcha. So we've mm-hmm. had. We have or have projects in all over the state uh, right. right now. So pretty so much client and retail focus. I've, inside the Columbia part, though, I feel like you are all over the Cottontown area. Is that a fair statement? Oh, that was sure. That was, yeah. yeah. So did you have, and I think I read this correctly because I did a little bit of research. Yeah. Uh, you can't have a man crush without actually having research, <laughs> right? I mean, you don't want to hit your rag into the wrong person. <laughs> um, but like into coffee and warm mouth, did you have some things to do with, with those developments, those yeah. kind of things? Yeah, so... Coming out of the gate, when I started uh, Case and Development Group, uh, we had two projects, and I would say we've mirrored that uh, same mix of yeah. product um, to this day. And that yeah. is, uh, we were doing a Taco Bell in Orangeburg, and we were doing the Warmouth uh, oh, cool. here. Mm-hmm. So a good friend of mine, Henry Moore, called me and yeah. said, I have a friend who wants to open a restaurant. And I'm like, okay, sure. You know, <laughs> who doesn't want to open a restaurant? That right? sounds fun. Uh, met with them. Yeah. Uh, uh, they are now my partners, Porter Baron and Rhett Elliott. Mm-hmm. They told me their concept. They told me what yeah. they were thinking. And uh, we looked all around and 
the only thing that was in Cotton Town was the Vino Garage, which yep. was mm-hmm. yeah, um, right. wine and beer store. And walked into this building and just said, guys, this is it. Like, this mm-hmm. is the, your concept. This, this right. is it. And so uh, then started doing some research in the area and found out that the demographics in a one-mile area were actually really strong. Sure. Um, they've only improved mm-hmm. over the last five years Absolutely. fairly considerably. And the housing market's improved, as we were just talking about. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, so that was the first project we did. And then kind of quickly realized there's a lot here. Yeah. And there are a bunch of buildings that are just untouched and are really cool buildings. Mm-hmm. I still uh, share the story that uh, these guys who did our sign uh, from Charleston, mm-hmm. they came to town and they were like, these buildings are so cool. And these guys are in Charleston, right? right. Yeah. We are all well, looking at their really buildings. Cool buildings. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> I was like, really? You like these buildings? He said, yeah, in Charleston, we have nothing like this. Nothing in this sort of a generation of buildings mm-hmm. in the uh, 50s to 70s yeah. uh, range. And so most of them were vacant yeah. or at least underutilized. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we just kind of kept buying up little little properties there. And the goal was to make it a big impact in a small area. Sure. And then now uh, we're trying to reap the benefits of that as well mm-hmm. and go into other areas of Columbia. So we've got um, some of our larger projects uh, are on Main Street, one on Rosewood, one in Forest Acres. Uh, that are all mixed use projects, yeah. uh, bringing some level of retail and um, residential. Yeah. So if you're doing developments, i.e. the war mouth and stuff like that, and you're holding them, I'm assuming you're you're expecting Columbia to continue to rise from the ashes and become not the the, the little brother to Columbia and Green, I mean to Charleston and Greenville, but to actually keep growing. Because if not, you would probably. I'm guessing you would sell and just, you, you think it's at the top, you sell it and you move on. But is that a fair assumption? Or? It is a fair assumption. Yes. There's do a you, lot of nuances to that. that assumption sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair assumption for sure. Yeah. One of the reasons why I went out on my own was that I, I saw that no one was focusing, no developers, very few were focusing on projects inside of Columbia. Sure. Mm-hmm. And so all these projects that were happening were either too large for anybody in Columbia or mm-hmm. nobody in Columbia was willing to yeah. take them on. And a lot of that, uh, honestly, is because it's it's challenging to do yeah. business here and the taxes are mm-hmm. high and uh, all things you've probably heard over and over again. Uh, yeah. It's challenging to open a business here. Sure, absolutely. Um, I think it's beginning to improve, but yeah. uh, slowly but surely. So I just felt the need for mm-hmm. uh, someone to, yeah. to start small at least and start uh, trying to make an impact. So absolutely, we're scratching the surface, I think, but uh, hopefully opening eyes to say, to see right. things can be done in Columbia. Sure. It does take a lot of work and sometimes it's mind numbing, but um, mm-hmm. we've been opposed every single project that we've ever had. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, um, public coming out with pitchforks. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yeah. thankfully the vast majority of people are, are are on the other side in favor yeah. of our projects, mm-hmm. but it's very hard to get people to come out in favor of projects but in Columbia, it's real easy to get well, them to come talk, out. Mm-hmm. Talking about pitchforks and people coming out a little bit, but like I, I live in Forest Lake. So like you're doing the development on Brentwood and yeah. Forest, right? Yeah. So I know it, it my layman's knowledge here, yeah. you were trying to do something a couple of years ago and I think it either went away or you've been rallying the troops for a little bit because I, I was coming back. Yeah. Like you're, are you actually approved to do something there? Or are you still trying to get approval? Yeah. All of that's accurate. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the end of the story is we we did get approval okay. uh, a, a couple of months ago. Um, yeah, and so what are you going to do? To there? do it. It's um, a retail commercial, yeah. about fifteen thousand square feet, and uh, uh, so high end boutique retail will be the yeah. the goal there, and then eleven townhomes in the oh, nice. kind of four hundreds. That's awesome. range. Yeah. So yeah. So um, if you could change two things to make yeah. it easier to develop businesses in Columbia, what would that be? Oh, gosh. Just two things. <laughs> Just two. You can go as long as you want. I'd like to hear <laughs> Top two. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter how difficult they would be to no, change. If you had a magic wand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, our fees and taxes are... They're brutal. And it's business fees or just like property all taxes? the above. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Property taxes, mm-hmm. business fees, business license fees, impact yeah. fees, mm-hmm. um, sewer, water and sewer expansion fees, all yeah. that stuff. It really adds up yeah. mm-hmm. on a new business. Um, uh, yes. You guys have started your own business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's every dollar is not a dollar that you are looking to put in your pocket. Right. It's a dollar you're looking to invest in your business. And every dollar that the, the municipalities take away from me, yeah. you can't invest it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we work with a lot of small businesses yeah. and it's crushing to them, especially yeah. because they, they'll find out down the road yeah. yes. 
Wait, thir- <laughs> uh, we owe thirty thousand yeah. dollars. You know, I might, have, I might have happened once or twice, <laughs> right? Yes. It's, it, yeah, I'm like how did we not know about that? Yeah, yeah, and and <laughs> we we I had know. one instance where. Um, Real quick, though. Yeah, yeah. By the way, that's not me, okay? That happens to everybody. That's right. Yeah. 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 I feel validated now. All right, please. I'll give one specific example. We had a restaurant um, that wanted to open, and they were going to, they already had a building chosen. The building had water and sewer serving it. Yeah. There's an expansion fee just to move it from a three quarter inch pipe to a one inch pipe. Now, they, they will then receive revenue in perpetuity Correct. on the water and sewer that yep. is used, right? Yep. But there's also an expansion fee and because of the size of the restaurant, which is not a big one, right. it was going to be uh, $30,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were we fought it in yeah. you know, tooth and nail, et cetera, and got it down to like 10, but yeah. that's still a big number. Yeah. yeah. So three years later, I'm talking to uh, someone at the city about that situation. And he said, well, did they tell you about the that you could spread that out over four years? No. Just three, three years later, like yeah. Yeah. no one no. shared that. No, yeah. and so nice to it, it's and to take that away from staff and people who work in the city, it's sure. not their fault. I mean, right. like they're they're given a, a set of rules. Yep, and, absolutely. And there's no incentives for them to go outside of those mm-hmm. or help you work sure. around them or figure them out. So, mm-hmm. um, so I think fees, et cetera, taxes and, and fees. yeah, taxes and fee fees. Number one, and then communication, mm-hmm. honestly, from our from the higher ups and I don't know where I'm going to pinpoint that as, sure. but to explain that development, it's not, it's not just good. And I, I'm not just saying it because I'm a developer. Sure. It's, it's critical. Like mm-hmm. there's no city that you look at that grew that didn't have development. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just, there's, it just right. never exists. You don't yeah. ever go to a city and say, this, this is an awesome city. And yet they haven't had any new development in right. 10 years. Right. You go because. You, you look like mm-hmm. Knoxville. I think like Knoxville hasn't changed since the seventies. <laughs> like. There you go. Right. And any great city we talk about now, Charleston, yeah. Raleigh, Charlotte, mm-hmm. these, they, they're close to us. Right. We say they're great because of the new developments that right. have happened. Mm-hmm. So figuring out ways to incentivize and also communicate to the community. Because sure. right. for whatever reason, we have a, a sense in Columbia that new development needs yeah us in the community to fight it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we have to fight it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, instead of figuring out ways to go, how do we help this guy right. or these mm-hmm. guys or this yeah. company get right. this project done? Absolutely. Um, and it uh, often is said or stated or things are implied that it's all about the money. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah. the reality is that's true. Sure. If that, Cause if you can't have a successful um, project, yeah. then you're not going to get a new project built. Right. So we ask for, People ask for new Trader Joe's and new Whole Foods yeah. and things like that. Well, you, you have to have the people. That's so. right. Yeah, it's amazing yeah, how it's like when I was just in Charleston last week and yeah. I, we have an office in Greenville, so I'm up there twice a week and the crane's everywhere. And then in Columbia, there's no cranes. And so like, I feel like that's indicative of the bigger scale problem. It's not as easy. So people are like, we're going to go a couple miles down the road and we'll put some cranes mm-hmm. up and build some nice stuff. Um, so I, I agree with you a little yep. bit. And w- there probably is a playbook or somebody probably at the city that could guide people through opening a new company or at least opening a new spot yep. because yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we do houses all day long, but like, yeah. I was like, what do you mean fire marshal's got to be here? Like there's got to be mm-hmm. a, a, so I literally had every employee with a drill gun. Cause if we didn't open that day, <laughs> like we were sunk for, for some legal purposes. Yep. And so like I had 14 fire extinguishers and 14 drill guns. I'm like, where do they go? Just point. We'll just, just put point, them right yeah. down the wall. Like I can't afford for you to come back. <laughs> that's right. Very yeah. nice people from the city, mm-hmm. yep. but I didn't have any kind of guidelines yeah. and maybe that's yeah. on me for not knowing, but you would think it's like how to, how to ask right. me my, ask me my favorite, uh, my, what I could change if it's commercial business. <laughs> this ask podcast me. isn't about you. No, ask me. I, I want to share mine. Brad, share mine. what would you change if you could Thank change you. anything about development in Columbia? Herbie Kirby's for commercial buildings. They charge us still $30 a month to pick up my Herbie Kirby's outside of our 6%, $18,000 tax bill for our building. 30 bucks a month. Yeah. That's included in my taxes and my personal property and all my right. personal rentals. But if it's a commercial, they're going to charge me $30 to pick up my trash. Yeah. I don't yep. get that one. It's 30 bucks. I don't even care. But it's 30 bucks. Yep. You got there's, asked, there's the bee in that bonnet. <laughs> so back to you. <laughs> um, I'm just curious. So because we have, you know, state and local government and the University of South Carolina, like I would think that being a capital city with, you know, those big draws of bringing people into our city would, would help fuel development. Do you feel mm. like that is a perk or is that not really help so much? It's certainly a little bit of both, okay. right? Everything has its uh, pluses and minuses. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's awesome that we have that talent pool coming in mm-hmm. to Columbia every year. Yeah. Um, and 
But if you look at what actually happens is they come in and then they leave. And they leave. Yeah. yeah. You know, which shows that there's not, that's on us. Like mm-hmm. we have to sure. figure out ways to attract them. And the change in tide has been that people want to work where they want to live. Mm-hmm. Or they want to live where there are things going on, there are right. things happening. Uh, and I think we have, we, we missed some of those mm-hmm. movements. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think it's done. I think we absolutely have the opportunity. I mean, or else we wouldn't, I wouldn't be focused here. I wouldn't sure. be right. investing dollars uh, here. Um, because I think the university is a huge uh, advantage right. for us. Um, yeah. And you all have heard there's stats about how much of the property is off of the property tax rolls here yeah. in Columbia. That's yeah. real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's probably, there should be some kind of sure. middle ground that can, that can be made yeah. there. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a politician, so I'm right. not in so that So just mix, to clarify what you're saying is yeah. uh, any pretty much all nonprofits don't have to pay property tax, which is a substantial amount of money every year mm-hmm. because they are deemed non right. nonprofits. Mm-hmm. So the people listening, they just may not understand like the That's university right. has a That's plethora right. a lot of, of property, a yes. lot of property mm-hmm. right? And a lot yeah. of times it's gifted over the years and everything else on top of what they already own. But yeah, they don't pay taxes. So yeah. it then burdens the smaller state businesses. State government, city government, all that. Yeah, and they lose mm-hmm. out too, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I just want to, yeah, be clear yeah. on that yeah. one. Yeah, good, good point. So. so we ask all of our yeah. participants, where do you see Columbia going in, in the next five years from now through the next five years, like what would you say you would see in terms of change or would like to see in terms of change or development or just your forecast on where Columbia is headed? Yeah. I think more density inner city has got, has got to happen Mm -hmm. uh, for us to grow. Mm -hmm. Um, It's got uh, the density residential has to happen and continue so that the commercial can continue yep. uh, to add um, more and more services. So areas, I think Cottontown has plenty of gr- growth. Uh, Cottontown, Elmwood Park, Earlwood, yep. um, for at least a, a, a couple blocks. Uh, mm-hmm. Plus to Elmwood, I think Forest Acres has mm-hmm. a couple of good pockets of uh, yep. development that are that are prime. I think uh, Rosewood, or we've got a project going. Um, Divine Street mm-hmm. has has some projects. Uh, five points, right? Yeah, I think it's a pretty is an interesting inflection point right now. That right. if we can, there seems do to be a lot of inventory there. in five points right yeah, now. They're, they're more than ever, <laughs> more sure. Than ever, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's those are some all of those areas from our perspective are infill areas sure. that we've mm-hmm. got to figure out how to how to uh, develop in a um, you know in the right way right. with mm-hmm. appropriate parking and things like that. I mean, right. we're all in Columbia used to parking yeah. right up next to yes. the door. Mm-hmm. Everyone should yeah. have a space right mm-hmm. next to yeah. the door. Mm-hmm. Although all those cities we just mentioned, yep. when you go there, you never do that. You no. never assume that. Sure. So mm-hmm. that's something we've got to get over. Um, right. And city of Columbia is changing their parking requirements hopefully soon. Uh, but we have the mentality right now and it's not neighborhood's fault, but when a neighborhood sees a parking requirement, that the city has, they're mm-hmm. not thinking if that was a 40 year old requirement right. or not. Right. They're just thinking that's what's required. These guys are trying to go outside of the bounds of the right. mm-hmm. requirements. Mm-hmm. And so, um, uh, we, we've got to figure out density and what that means. And we're mm-hmm. just new to it. Yeah. It's new to us. Right. So, um, so I think those, uh, West Columbia mm-hmm. is another uh, area that I'd love to see yeah, continue I mean, that, that growth there. But what about the river? I feel yeah. like that's such an untapped, you yeah, know, absolutely. like if you look at Greenville, like their river runs right through their whole Main Street mm-hmm. um, yeah. area. And I just feel like nobody's doing much on the river. Totally agree. Um, honestly, I, I rarely bring that up because there's there's one property owner that mm-hmm. controls it. And okay. I feel like they missed the last wave and I mm-hmm. feel like they've missed we, this wave mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's yeah. their, that's but their, right. it's their, I just saw the other day, USC is putting a pedestrian walk over the railroad tracks down by um, yep. Columbia craft. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be okay. pushing all the way down. Cause mm-hmm. I guess the master plan is like a big amphitheater and some stuff yeah, down yeah. there. They've got, they've had that plan yeah. for gosh, 15 years probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it'd be real exciting if it can happen. Sure. Um, and I think there's, I, I've heard there are more discussions going on sure. about mm-hmm. that happening. So I'd love to see that happen. So when do you think like, um, cause it, it, it is, is a tipping point when you go to a major city and you're like, man, these houses are on top of each other or all these are four story townhomes. And there has to be a time where the city or somebody goes, enough, like you, they almost throw the, the zoning requirements out the window a little bit. I mean, they're like zero lot lines. That's fine. Build it as long as it's architecturally like in the bounds of what we think is pretty build it because you will never get high density with 
10 foot setbacks and all of these things. So is that a election kind of thing? You've got to have people looking forward to that or is it get to the point where the city goes, we need more tax revenue, just throw it out. Yeah, I, I might be a little cynical on us getting there where the city <laughs> looks at the tax revenue part. I think there are members of council who see that for yeah. sure. Um, but I think that the, I think we're moving the needle in that way a Good. little bit. The zoning changes that are coming up are much more urban friendly. Okay. Um, I think, but so much of it is the education piece yeah. for for people because sure. you're asking people who have never done real estate in their lives. Mm -hmm to look at a zoning sign and, hey, don't freak out. Mm -hmm. Right. But these guys are asking, or these people are asking for a change right. mm -hmm. that's outside of our zoning requirements. Yeah. Yeah. And so yep. by people's nature, fear of the unknown mm -hmm. uh, drives everything. And so yeah, we traffic, are. traffic, traffic. Well, they need to change the color of the sign because yellow <laughs> is supposed to make people angry, right? Green is <laughs> so, supposed to make people hungry and blue is supposed yeah, to calm people yeah, down. So like... They should change the color. That's of the a good first well, change. Mary Lee and I know the uh, zoning people, the code enforcers very well. Uh, we've done some development and we learned a lot of, uh, of the rules. Um, <laughs> probably should have read the rules before we did the development <laughs> of a parking lot. Um, shade trees. We learned a lot about shade but trees. I still might be under probation with that. So I'm not talking any smack, but uh, yeah, yes, yeah. shade trees within 40 Shred feet of every in case single. They're listening. We're great. We <laughs> yeah, did everything yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we're good right now. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So would, is it safe to say, like, looking out that North Main is going to continue to be revitalized and just new infrastructure? I mean, it's amazing what underground utilities change a streetscape. I mean, all if they could do that right there by the Gamecock uh, Bilo yeah. coming down the hill, the entire Wood Hill area would look completely different. Yeah. Was, that was just my two cents. But is oh, North Main yeah. area where you think the next, like, yep. hip, trendy kind of area you think might be? I think... Um, there's one big piece in the middle of uh, that cotton town area that it has to move first. And that's that old Jim Moore Cadillac um, yep. mm -hmm. site is 5.2 yep. acres and mm -hmm. whatever happens there will dictate yep. the future of that, um, of that area sure. beyond. So uh, I th it, when you get past that, there are a few little pockets yep. here and there, but that's the big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we can get that one right. Any, um, any whispers on what's going to happen? We, yeah, we looked at it before yeah. we did this building for our church. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I remember that. It was, it was awesome, but yeah. yeah, not quite. Yes, yeah, there's some there's some rumors out there yeah. what, what's uh, being planned. Someone has it under contract right now, oh, plans Good. to do mixed use. Um, cool. Everything I've seen, he's got some great ideas, and yeah. we might work with him, hopefully. And Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a big, big piece, uh, not just for that area, but for the city, really, because yeah. we need to clean that up. Yeah. Everything that happens over there benefits here yeah. and vice versa. Sure. Um, you know, this is a great development. We haven't even talked about this. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. Bull Street. Yeah. And I think it's, it's absolutely critical to Columbia to get this mm -hmm. right, yeah. to yeah. get yeah. behind it. It's yeah. happening. It's here. Yeah. Whether you agree with the way it happened yeah. you know, right. 10 years ago, whatever, we're, we yeah. got to move on because this is yeah. something we need. Um, we need it to go really well, yeah. too. REI's yeah. open. Mm -hmm. REI's Starbucks open. is cranking. Starbucks, yeah. Yeah. They're getting ready to get open in a couple months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh boy. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Here we go. Um, so, I guess, leave us with this. If somebody was looking to open a business in Columbia, whether it's mom and pop boutique or whatever, like what what words of encouragement would you, would you tell them why they should do that here in Columbia? We have those conversations a lot. And a lot <laughs> of what we tell people, especially restaurateurs, is – we recognize that as compared to Charleston, there is a smaller amount of demand, yeah. but the supply is infinitely smaller than Charleston. So at Charleston, where they have hundreds of restaurants, they have new restaurants opening every week. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. So an operator who is good at what they do and has a decent concept is going to do well here. I mean, yeah. there's nothing revolutionary about serving barbecue in a good location in five points yeah. and home team has figured out how to do it and they are crushing it. And I happened to have lunch there today. Oh, did you? And, well, <laughs> and, and halls, there's yeah. nothing revolutionary about a steakhouse, yeah. mm -hmm. but they're doing it really, really well. Yeah. And they're, they've proven almost sure. everyone in Columbia who said, Oh, we will never pay for steaks like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. They're busy every time, yeah. every yeah. time we ever go. Right. And mm -hmm. so I think those are two good examples of restaurants that came or businesses that came from other cities sure. And said, so we're going to take a risk and we're going to invest a lot of money yeah. um, and we're going to do it right. And mm -hmm. they're rewarded by it. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. There's a lot of those stories that we have here 
You mentioned Starbucks. Uh, the one in the Vista was like one of the top five stores in the country for years. I don't know yeah. where it sits right now. Uh, Tzatziki and yeah. just go you know, random yeah. locations mm-hmm. is one of the top ones in the in the country for wow. a while. And so it can happen here in mm-hmm. Columbia, and I think people are fearful because you don't see as many right. sure. restaurants. But I'm, that's specific to restaurants. But yeah. I think the same is true with any business. Uh, Makes sense. There's a lot to do here. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of opportunities. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much for joining yeah, absolutely. us today. Thank you all. I really appreciate your time and your wisdom and your expertise. And so Likewise. I hope everybody will stay tuned, subscribe and keep listening. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you all for having me. It was awesome. fun.